the sword, famine, death, and beasts, the work of the fourth, the pale horse of the book of Revelation. This is part 33 of the Revelation study. We've been working through Revelation. We've been comparing spiritual with spiritual, scripture with scripture. Jesus' words, which he's the word of God, are spirit and life. So we compare a little bit here, a little bit there, precept upon precept, line upon line. And we come to spiritual truth. And we're looking at the fourth horseman, which is the pale horse, the greenish, yellowish horse. And it's great tribulation on God's people. And we looked at that in part 32, which I'll tag on this slide. Uh, and the, we looked at the fourth part of the land, or the fourth of the land. It represents God's people. It's God's people's heart. The, the great tribulation is directed at them. And that's what the fourth horseman has control over. He's going after that fourth part, that good soil the, of the four soils. But we need to look at what does it mean by killing, by sword, famine, death, and beasts of the earth. So we're going to look at that in the study. Please consider subscribing. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you. And here is the passage. Uh, I looked and behold a pale horse. His name that sat on him was Death and Hades or Hell followed with him. And we looked at that in the, uh, the last video, part 32. And power was given unto them over the fourth of the land, the fourth part of the earth, literally the fourth of the land, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. We're going to look at that in this video. This is a, a picture, a portrait of the Great Tribulation. It's directed toward God's church. So let's move on with our study. Okay, so here's some Great Tribulation parallel passages on this business with the famine, the sword, the beast, and death. Matthew, and Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13 are all from the Olivet Discourse. They're, they're Great Tribulation passages. We see in Matthew 24, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences. Luke 21, they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. This all describes great tribulation. Back to Matthew 24, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. That word afflicted is tribulation. And shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This great tribulation on God's church. And God's church is a mixture of saved and unsaved people. And we see the beast all through prophetic passages concerning the Great Tribulation and others, Satan is referred to as a beast, the serpent. The serpent is a beast. He's a great red dragon, Revelation 12. The Antichrist, Revelation 13, is, is the, uh, the leopard of Revelation 13, the beast. The little horn of Daniel 7, 8, the, the little horn that comes out of the beast. The false prophet with the two horns, which represents the leadership of the end time church. Is, is a beast, Revelation 13. Satan's ministers in the church, they're, they're wolves in sheep's clothing, Matthew 7, Luke 10. We also see more passages uh, on great tribulation on God's people. That in Daniel 9, it says that the uh, Antichrist will come to destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the sanctuary is the place of God's people, which is the church. Revelation 13, the, the back to the leopard beast. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The little horn wears out the saints. Um, the place of the sanctuary cast down, and the little horn destroys wonderfully the mighty and holy people. Great tribulation on the saints, on God's people, the fourth of the land. Daniel 11, another great tribulation pa passage. The people that n do know their God shall be strong, yet they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil. Many days. Daniel 11. So we see all these passages about great tribulation. It's directed at God's people. All these are parallel passages to what we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to tag the slide with a, a link to go look at our great tribulation series that we've done on this. But let's move on with the study. Okay, so we also see the four judgments of Ezekiel 14. And we have this video on this, which I'll tag on the slide. In those four judgments on Jerusalem... And in the land of Judah, which included mostly unsaved people, but it was the church of God. And it was God's people. There was always a remnant there, but they received 
this persecution. And again, it's the same things, famine, evil beast, sword, and pestilence. And they're very similar to what's in Revelation 6. The only difference is death is replaced by pestilence. But pestilence brings death. So we see these four judgments of Ezekiel 14, which is a type of the Great Tribulation, a 70-year a, a period of time where, where uh, Jerusalem and Judah were in captivity to Babylon, and these were the judgments, the Great Tribulation before the destruction of Jerusalem. And we see the results of those four judgments of Ezekiel 14 was it that made the land desolate. And we see the same terminology in the Olivet Discourse, Luke 21, about the, the desolation of Jerusalem. And it was by these four judgments, and that's a type of the Great Tribulation. And, and, but we see that there's God's people, even back in Ezekiel at the time of the uh, Judah and Jerusalem, they were brought through Great Tribulation. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that should be brought forth, both sons and daughters. They shall come forth unto you, and they shall see their way and their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil I brought upon Jerusalem. It's a promise to the remnant. A promise there's always a remnant, that, but Satan's attack is on the church, because that's where God's people reside. And they, they, the attack causes uh, oppression against God's people. Okay, another proof that this passage is related to the Great Tribulation is when we look at the fifth seal of Revelation. This goes beyond the four horsemen, but the fifth seal, we see that when it was opened, under the altar, the souls of them that were slain were killed for the word of God and for their testimony. And white robes are given unto every one, and it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants, also their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So it's like an inter like a parenthetical look at what's going on in the fourth seal, the pale horse's four afflictions on God's people, that these that were slain are told, just wait a little season until all of your fellow servants are killed. That little, the, the, first the word and is actually in the Greek, it's actually in the Bible, it's, and it means consecutive action with the fourth seal. So it's a, it's a, it's a continuation or a parenthetical uh, uh, commentary on the fourth seal. And, and we see that most importantly, the little season, it's the exact same Greek words that's used of the loosing of Satan in Revelation 23, which is a type of the Great Tribulation. So we see that the fifth seal helps prove that the fourth seal is part of the Great Tribulation. Okay, so let's move on because the purpose of this Great Tribulation is to kill. But, but it's a spiritual killing. Just uh, take a look at Matthew 24. They shall be delivered up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my, my name's sake. And, but we remember that in the Bible, especially in prophecy, there's symbolic language. And we find that carried out throughout the whole Bible. Where the, the New Testament says that we as Christians die daily because we, we were persecuted. We, we give up our own fleshly desires. We suffer for the cause of Christ. We spend our time, our resources, caring about things that are righteous and, and God-pleasing. And we care about the Bible. And Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, which applies to all Christians, we're to die daily. We're crucified with Christ. Our, our fleshly desires are crucified. We also see in 1 John 3, 15, that whoever ha hates his brother is a murderer. So to be hated means to be murdered. Christians, especially in Matthew 24, it says that we'll be hated of all nations. So we'll be murdered, we'll be killed by all nations. Everybody's going to hate the true Christians because they stand for what's righteous and true and for the word of God. So we're, we're murdered, we're killed, we die daily as we're hated by other people. The final one, Matthew 5, it was said in all time, you shall not kill. But whoever shall kill be in danger of the judgment. But that's compared now. But I say unto you, Jesus says unto us, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So in this passage, to kill somebody is being equated to being angry with them. If you're angry with your brother, and people are going to be angry, angry at God's people, because we're we're talking about the Bible, we're talking about justice, we're talking about truth, we're talking about Jesus Christ. People are going to be angry. There's great tribulation on the church. 
Okay, so let's move into the four issues, the four judgments here, the sword, the famine, the death, and the beast. And the first one is sword, and that's killing by the word of God. And we know that the sword represents the word of God in Ephesians 6.17. It's a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. We even saw that this, in a previous video, the second horseman, which is Satan, is given a great sword, and he takes peace, or he prevents salvation. He's trying to hinder the gospel, and that people should kill one another. They, 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 they hate each other. That they, they disregard each other. They, they essentially put each other to silence because they, they're spiritually killing people. Um, and we see prophetic language in Luke 21. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall be led away captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. During the Great Tribulation, there's a Great Tribulation on the church, which includes both saved and unsaved people. And, and it's by the sword. It's by deception. The word of God is there, but it's being deceptively taught. Or the whole counsel of God's not being taught. Only the good stuff. The positive stuff. There's no, there's no judgment. There's no preaching about sin. And, and the characteristics that a Christian is not to sin. And, and that's what happens during the Great Tribulation. It's a huge, great time of, of persecution because of deception and because the sword is, is out there. Uh, Revelation 13, again, a, a great tribulation passage. Uh, it concludes part of the, the chapter about the Antichrist. It says, he that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. It's a promise that there will be justice against the Antichrist. He that kills with the sword, and that's what the Antichrist will do, must be killed with the sword. The Antichrist will be ultimately thrown into the lake of fire. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. As we go through the Great Tribulation, we have to be patient. There's, there's a word of God that's being deceptively taught, and the churches are in confusion, and they're, they're following wrong gospel, false prophecy, and it's a feel-good, ear-tickling church. Okay, number two, it's the famine. We've already looked at this in a previous video, the third horseman, the black horse. It's things that happen in the church age, but it's just going to be a more intense time during the Great Tribulation. It's the famine for hearing the word of God. The word of God is like bread. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But there's a scarcity of that bread. It's a very expensive because it's hard to find. It's hard to find the truth. We, we go to church and we're only hearing an ear-tickling message. We're hearing false prophecy. We're hearing about false gospels, false ways of salvation, all type of things that are man's wisdom replacing things in the church. And we recall Amos 8. The days come, says the Lord God, that, uh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst of water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. A great famine. That's what the great tribulation. Famine has always been in the church age, but it's intensified. Even though the, the word of, the, the, with the, all the electronics and the internet and all the availability of Bibles, it's worse than ever because it's deceptively taught. There's deception going on during the Great Tribulation. Okay, number three, death. It's the and we looked in the last video that death is the result of, of sin. Remember this fourth horseman, the pale horse, is death in Hades. It, it's about death, and we know death is directly tied to sin. It's the result of sin. So that there's going to be great sinfulness. And we recall Romans 5, 12, all have sinned, and that's why death came into the world. Uh, but Romans 8, 13 says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. If one that, so the, the great tribulation is all about the living after the flesh. It's all type of carnality. It's all type of, of fleshly desires, and it brings death. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. And we see a feature of the Great Tribulation is none other than lawlessness. Lawlessness, 2 Thessalonians 2, is all about the Great Tribulation. It's about the man of sin, the Antichrist, during the Great Tribulation. Let no man deceive you. There's great deception, for that day shall not come. The day of Christ will not come, except there is a falling away, an apostasy, and that man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. The Antichrist is revealed. But the mystery of iniquity always was already at work during the church age, 
But when the wicked one will be revealed, Second Thessalonians 2, 7, and 8, it's going to get hugely worse. And, and that's what we, we, we're going to see in the end time. It's a very lawless environment. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, it's characterized, the Great Tribulation is characterized by sin. And sin leads to death. In them that perish, them that die, death. Because they receive not the love of the truth, which is the Bible, but that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. There's going to be great delusion at the end time that they should believe a lie. There's all type of false gospel, false prophecy, feel-good messages in churches that people think they're okay when they're really not. That they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They, they have pleasure in their worldliness. The abomination of desolation in the end time is all about serving other gods and idols, and that's what we have around us today. We're in a very idolatrous time of this uh, period of history. It's all about worshiping your material possessions, worshiping your achievements, worshiping your goals, getting that promotion, doing uh, succeeding in this world. And that's what the Great Tribulation like, and that all leads to death. Number four, the beast of the earth. We touched on this a little bit in the last video, but Satan is that great red dragon. He's a beast, the Antichrist. That this is the satanic trinity. He's a beast because he's like a, a leopard. His feet are like the feet of a bear, mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, his feet, and great authority. The, Satan is loose during the Great Tribulation. He gives his authority to this, this, this figure, the Antichrist, this man of sin. And then there's a false prophet with two horns, which represents the leadership of the church. It's going to support this nonsense and this evil and this sin. Another beast come out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He looks good. It, this is, and we have we have videos on all this. Uh, but but the false prophet is is the is the one with the two horns. It's the church leadership, and he exercised all the power of the first beast and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Worldliness. The church is going to promote worldliness. Okay, and there's more beasts in the church. We the, and through the whole church age, there's false prophets. They come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, go your way. Behold, I sent you forth as lambs among wolves. There's all type of wild beasts out there. And during the Great Tribulation, they're all around us. They're, the beasts are everywhere. There's su they're, in 2 Corinthians 11, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, trans themselves, and themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. They look good. They say they bring Christ. They look good on the outside. They, 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 they have a Bible in their hand, but it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Satan's ministers look good. They say they're for righteousness, but their end shall be according to the works. They're false ministers. Okay, so that, that's an, an, a quick uh, explanation of these four uh, these four uh, afflictions, these four tribulations on the church and on God's people, the sword, the famine, the death, and the beast. It's using the word of God deceptively. There's no truth to be found. It, everything's lies. There's promotion of lawlessness, sin, worldliness. And the, the beast, the satanic trinity, and the false minister of the church are out in force. So we're going to move on now, and we're going to stick with the Great Tribulation, and we're going to look at the outcome, or a, 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 a parenthesis, if you will, that's discussed in the fifth seal about those that are killed in Great Tribulation in heaven. We're going to look at that in the next video. Please consider subscribing, and thank you very much for watching this video.